Hi there, welcome to Tersen. Today we'll take a look at how Tersen uses algorithms to shape cell populations into clusters. Being able to see the phenotypic populations and identify patterns in their relationships is what flow cytometry is all about. Typically, clustering is done through biaxial or manual gating, and many algorithms have been developed to automate this. In fact, quite a few in the last five years. But today we're going to recommend that the stats technique called FlowSum be used for cytometry data. One of the main reasons we recommend FlowSum is because of the work done by Lucas Weber while at the Mark Robinson Lab in the University of Zurich. Lucas compared 18 clustering methods over six cytometry datasets that had different characteristics. Four were CyTOF datasets and two were traditional cytometry. For illustration, we're shown only one of the six datasets, called Levine32. We'll leave a link in the publication where you can see how the algorithms performed on the other datasets. And we have Lucas's data in our GitHub if you want to recreate the experiment yourself. He signed an F1 score to rate how closely the algorithmic method compared to manual gating. You can see on this graph that Flosum scores the highest in accuracy with 0.76. The green and red bars represent performance on false positives and false negatives. Flowsum scores pretty well here too. This graph represents how performant the algorithms were in terms of compute time. And you can see that Flowsum is among the quickest to calculate. So what is Flowsum? Flowsum is a basic neural net. It is very good for classifying groups, such as clustering the pixels of a JPEG image for face recognition. What makes it interesting to cytometry is that it can show the relationship of populations in a structure called a minimum spanning tree. Flosum uses a stochastic method for calculations, and it bases its randomization off a number called a seed. Our operator allows the seed to be set manually for situations where you need to reproduce exact results, like a publication. Flosum can programmatically discover the number of clusters in your dataset, but we don't recommend doing this because it tends to undercluster, and you could miss an important population. We recommend setting the number of clusters manually, and I'll show you how you can decide that number in our next video. Let's take a look at a Flowsum workflow, which we built in Tersen using the PBMC dataset from the earlier video. You see there's an ACE and H transformation, like before, and we've run Flowsum on that. We graphed all of the channels for this illustration, but in a real experiment, you'd probably analyze just a subset. Here we manually set the algorithm for seven clusters. For this data step, we projected a visualization of the flowsum's output and colored by group to see how the flowsum has classified the cells. This data step has a flowsum shiny operator attached. Shiny operators have more sophisticated code. They can generate specialized graphs and show them on Tersen's operator tab. This operator has created a minimum spanning tree, which shows how the clusters are related to each other. For example, the yellow group is related to the green group through the cyan group. If we zoom closer, we can observe the respective densities of the channels that make up a population. It's also possible to apply dimension reduction techniques like UMAP either before or after flow some calculations. We have some workflows to illustrate these scenarios. In this example, the dimension reduction is done after flowsum, and we've coloured by cluster to appraise them. On this workflow, we've done dimension reduction in advance of flowsum. Flowsum is applied to the UMAP components rather than the channels. This approach has the advantage of getting groups more clearly separated. However, as we explained in the previous video, dimension reduction is a representation of your data that works by excluding redundancy. So you need to be careful when choosing this approach because you could potentially lose smaller, rare populations. So that's a quick overview of why we recommend Flowsum as the stats technique for clustering cytometry data. Many thanks to Lucas for the comparison research, and Sophie who designed the brilliant Flowsum algorithm, which we use in Tersen. Thanks for watching.